Maybe you could talk a little more about the um, history of dance and how it relates to music. So this song is... But the word dance is a little bit abstract because dance hasn't started with no more. But what we, what we want to make the difference here is the influence of what people came to call Ndombolo, and which was an influence of Congolese dance, you know, that, that came to take a, a space in the African modern music, even though uh, Congolese music had always taken the space because it's among Congo, Ghana, and, you know, I will assume South Africa, I have to check years. They have among the mo most modern band, like among other you know, you know, uh, among other places, I have to check for Senegal to to really be sure. Because the assumption I have from you know noticing is many people play modern, but it's more in a spectrum of world music, which is more like traditional music, but with sort of you know like it's, it's traditional instrument. But to take modern band, Congo had recording from like the late thirties and and early forties. You know what I mean? of modern bands, you know what I mean? So that formula has emerged there. And before you know, they came out with a lot of popular songs that took over Africa, you know what I mean? You know, the, the likeness of independence, cha-cha, and we could go back to many others, you know, you know, great. So Congolese has always somehow been in the African market because of the, the business of uh, record labels as well, because there was a lot of recording, you know, edition in the Congo. So when you have it like that, it spreads, you know what I mean? Uh, that had to help. So going back to, to Ndombolo, we were saying, if you listen to Congolese music, even coming off, like when they started, like the Zaiko wrote the style of the seven, the one we dance with today, when that style emerged in a, in a in, it used to be different. People would call Sum Jun, uh, people would call, you know, a different form, Kavasha, but... The emergence of seven, the one you hear, that that's you know got into the sukus today. You know we're giving credit mostly to Zaiko because uh, based on the history we have, uh, what's his name, Manuak, one of the um, um, uh, percussion of that you know guitar, uh, will say they got the inspiration from listening to the the train uh, 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 and Mary Jo. From that, they mimic that sound. And then it became that, you know what I mean? So, because it became so popular, it has emerged from different styles. In the 70s, like I explained in one of my my drum video, it had more also an attachment. Like you see, you can see the James Brown influence of the visit, you know, during the Rumble in the Jungle era where James Brown, all these, you know, people came in. You can see the seven in those days had like a funky, like more, so the the apathy, you see a little bit of the James Brown mix, and you see in Congolese music, you see the fast tendency of Bakongo style. In those days, the Bangala style, which is like music like Bonyoma, were mostly into the traditional area. Unless you they're using songs like Mafulmaya, into the like with the that blade, but it wasn't really a dominant style in terms of what influenced modern Congolese, but it was mostly by Congo style. Where that's we see the things like Sukus when you hear his mouth, people are here, like my Congo, and so you see with that influence, you also see in the dance when you go back in the days, you don't really see somebody dancing here, you see them more. Miri, like they're like almost standing. Miri, 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 because Bakongo. Like they're most here, because Bakongo, when you go back to Bakongo dance, you don't see Bakongo, the Bakongo, the, the, the lower they could go, is just here. But you don't really see them like you see today. Even when you go down in things like uh, a tuta now, those things, people were here. But they were not moving the waist around. It's more like a pop. Pop. So Ndombolo is the one because he slowed the music down. You started to see the emergence of the Bangala influence inside. Where the music is sort of going 
which force the dance like that you can still hear those ngongi like the bell in Kongri 7 but you didn't see the color of the 6a emerging that clear even though this music still 6a because it's african style you know what i mean you can still hear that but it was more in the congo uh, Bambala, Bakongo style, you know, that's really where you see the influence of DK because Kichasa is really those people a lot, you know what I mean? The Congo people. In Kinshasa, you have, you have the... Kinshasa has everyone, of course, but Kinshasa belongs... Kinshasa itself belongs to the DK people. That's the city where Stanley, all these guys had to, you know, ask the right to, you know what I mean? As everybody started to come there, then you started to see, like, even... When we talk about those music, you talk about the the Odeo people, like the the Mala, the the Congo, you know, by Congo people. So they influence a lot the early sevens and early you know music, because you can see even the system of that talak where people do shout out. It came from those. They used not to sing a lot. It's more sharp, right? Like the calling out on things. It has to do with the Congo style. Bakongo. When I say Congo, it means Bakongo, like the Bakongo people. Because remember, Congo, the kingdom of Congo included Bakongo and many other, you know, Bayombe, they're all inside. But, you know, in the overall spectrum, you use the word Bakongo, you know what I mean? But it means a bunch of different people. Even people in the Bandundu have Bakongo, but they have Bambala people in, in there, you know what I mean? But now, when you start going to the Mongo people, which some of my grandfathers and them are a part of, the music changes the color. It's more, we use, our music was a lot of focus on traditional. Where when you hear, we want to hear Ngala people music, it was not on stage. Like, there were Ngala people musicians, like Evoloko. But in the modern music, the influence of Congo was a lot. That's what you see early the dance out here, like I keep repeating. But the Ngala people, we dance. So we, we, we mold everything and which connect the shoulder and go into the waist the way you see Fali in them dance. But you usually saw that like we'll finish playing in modern band, we go watch traditional groups. You start seeing the different groups from different tribes. And then the way you saw Mongo and the Ngala people, you see them through like purely traditional music. So now the emergence of that started to come in, and you could notice now in the in the late, like mid uh, '90s, going towards late '90s, what you started to hear in the music, the music is sort of going. It started to go. It started to take that traditional sound. That young people were playing part of, we were part of different traditional group, started to force it into the contemporary form, which directly also brings to, according to my observation, this melange of you go from Congo to, to, to once you start here to good, to, 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 you started to change your form. Your form started to become more, you could recognize that the waist is down for the Ngala people. That's where you started to see, you know, and in a, I don't want to say I just want to give credit to Fali per se, but I think that usage of waste in that range, because even Ndombolo, when it came through, because Ndombolo forced the music to sound a little slower, right? Because that emergence of traditional from the Ngala, Mongo, started to enter the music. People like Japonais, the guitarist, you know, to him, they started to call that notion Mboka Mboka, which means uh, the village or uh, Kimboka, right? They're calling it uh, of the village where you hear that in Ndombolo when we get recording Ndombolo. Because of that, the music was no longer it's not the way you heard it before. Because that forced you to dance a little more happily versus than dancing a little more down it, you know what I mean? But now if it's if it was the drum man, 
So it forces even the guitarist to play almost like they were playing traditional music. Literally. Even though, yeah, Congolese music is still, even the contemporaries is merges from traditional. But we're talking about going from the Bakongo dominant form in the modern Sukus. Versus the Bangala emergence. So then music went from So the color and number allowed the dancer to to merge from a dancer could dance here. Cross across. So no more was popping by switching the, the speed, it forces young men of certain tribe who could not wind the way strong to stay there, but those now who can or from the Mongol tribe, some of us, Fali, all those people, it became easy to to mix in that notion of waste in it because Bangala people already dance here <laughs> so it's natural that's why he started to see because before even the sister they would get the waste but it was still in Bakongo form which uses the first uh what you call the first position men's are here cut ah ladies shake it a little bit but now Bakongo I mean uh, Mongo forces you to go into second position because the waste is involved now now you don't longer just have a pop but you have a pop roll, pop roll, pop roll, pop roll, pop roll, pop roll. Can do because you're mixing now bonyoma inside. You know what I mean? So number uh, is really the forcing of bonyoma inside, and some sort of a village angles in the music. The music started to have like a wiggle thing. Started to have those wiggle because the six A farming allowed it. So Ndombolo stay there. Congolese music became now just for Congolese, even though it was popular for everybody. Because Sukus, everybody would just hear fast beat, boom, they're dancing. But Ndombolo, you have to, like, it's still, you know, somebody from outside might find it boring, but we finding the marinated sauce. Like Congolese can just dance by that sound of just the that speed that he has to carry in the body and putting different forms inside, which other people have to find the breath for it, you know what I mean? So that's for me, those are some of the observations you observe in how the you know the the, the the form has changed. That's what you see now when um when Fali show up in the right time. In 98 when he joined in Kofi. He's naturally already dancing. He had those techniques and forms, right? From the Raja Kula school of thought, right? Uh, most things you see, those shapes was formed by Raja Kula. Rest his soul. He passed away. But most Bandal kids lived around him. So it's like when he, he rehearsed, they're watching. They're learning from... It's like it's second nature to them. But you mix those... Plus now being a Mungala, you could transition. Because dance is really not just the move, it's how you transition. You know a good dancer by transitioning. So if I go, technique, 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 kara, ah, and transition. That's when you tell a good dancer. Because not a lot of people can transition properly. They can dance, but they can't transition. So you have that. We're talking 98. Many of us were, you know, I was barely 17. Uh, others, like uh, Fali was 21. So you're talking young men, but with low their level of skills. They're dancing like they went to opera, to like they were trained. Because what? Clean transition, handsome young men, good singing, good dancing. That mix will keep the music going somewhere. So people like Kofi... Wenge, they all benefited from people like Big Clinton, like the young, you know, the one who was doing the shout, 
like a bunch of young people came when Gwenge separated, it became also like a, a different competition. And then the good thing is, the reason we call Congolese dance music Nombolo, because that dance Nombolo, when it came out, the market couldn't get enough of it. Every year, they were forcing Ben to do it again, again, again. So he's still on the market for 10 to 12 years. Nothing ever happened like that. I bet you in Africa, dance were popular, but they have to be there for a year. Kwasa Kwasa is all good, but next year the band come out with something new already. But every band were forced to do a, a revision of Nombolo every year. It went like that from 94, 93, I believe Nombolo started to 90, end of 93, beginning of 94, it started to emerge. Because when they started it in the neighborhood, it started, like, we started to listen to like mixtape of it. But it wasn't out yet until JB came out with the album in 96, officializing Nombolo. And then <coughs> with Kofi using, putting the album Loa, making Dombolo official uh, to Buho, when Buho, like based on the story, he's one of the young men who shaped that dance. So it became popular then, even though it was in the streets of Kinshasa from like 94, 95, you know what I mean? And then it, it blew up when it came out in 96. Officially in different city and Kofi came out in 97, I believe, with Lua. Ndombolo blew up. So from that, 94 that he started in the streets, to 96, Jibe coming out with the album uh, Fait de l'Amour, which has Ndombolo as one of the, you know, the tune with Kofi bringing out Lua. This way, world hate, hate. The way, like Lua album, hate song, hate album. Uh, Jibe Fait de l'Amour, hate song, so Ndombolo. Just, I was you know, already in America. 97 when Lua came out, like, bro, I was proud to be Congolese. Like, I'm telling you, like, dude, the way you see Afrobeat today, like, bro, no club could not survive without Congolese music. And it's been like that since the 60s, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But Lua, different world breath. That led Kofi to playing Olympia, led Kofi to play Zenith, those like big arenas in, you know, in, in Europe. And it led him to be the first black person or African, I bet even black, to play Bercy in 2000. Back then it was 17,000 seats. Now they reformulated, it became 23,000 arena, you know what I mean? So those are the influence of Dombolo, because throughout every album after, people are requesting Dombolo. So back then also, because Wenge came out with it, Kofi never had a problem really copying what Wenge did but doing his own special way because he came out with unique Ndombolo as well that nobody ever seen. Like Lua has his unique Ndombolo. Uh, album Ultimatum had a unique Ndombolo inside. The album uh, Atlanta, when Atanta, which is a uh, attempt like, you know, Atanta. That one, the other old band left him and then Fali group came in, had another version of Ndombolo. The, uh, force the fuck had it, you know, like they continue to rendition of that and he stayed in the market for like Nombolo started to morph itself in different forms. Sometimes it came in the form of Mobondo Sabina. All this has to do with that form of Nombolo, but it's becoming a Mobondo Sabina. You, you're putting different forms into it, you know. Sometimes it becomes this, all forms of Nombolo emerging into different dents. So it kept in the market for a long, long time. That's what they call Congolese music today, Ndombolo. Was was uh, Ndombolo like music first, or was it a dance? It was always a dance. Uh, when your music came out with the Ndombolo, 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 and then Tala Tala Mam, the whole formula, the whole Naya, Kala Bana Bata, Vata Gisaya, Ya, Ka, 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 Hallelujah. And when it becomes a dance, it becomes actually Come and see. But no more in the beginning when they go like this. No more that form. So that dance, you just, you know, it took Kinshasa Street by storm. We were buying Wenge tapes, like, you know, like mixtapes. Before even the album came out. Like, you gotta have, like, if I'm passing by your house, Nombolo made everybody crazy because the dance was so simple, but it's so meticulous and mysterious because 
it's resolving a lot of forms, giving you a second shape of Afghanness with the pop, removing us from just the Bakongo. Without even putting the waist yet, but just putting that form there solve a lot of things. That form has a lot of shapes in it. It makes you resolve a lot of things because of where it is. So it made it almost like it made us completely full circle for the first time in African contemporary art and dance. Like African, we're able to see something and relate to it right away. People in Africa, they, they will take their own shape. Some of them used to dancing with the accent, they'll, they'll, they'll find whatever shape. They didn't do it the way we do it. And eventually, they're all learning. Today, all Africa has its own version of Ndombolo in their dance. Mind you, all everybody. Because the fact that people picked that up, so you have now started to easy to, to merge those twists you see Congolese do that the school of Raja Kula formulated, you know what I mean? You see in everybody dance. If you watch Avroyan's video, you see shape. I, I, they have their own shape, you, you see, but we're talking about the, the normal shape, all those forms, all those forms. Like, <laughs> don't let it twist it. Like, it came through the normal shape that everybody has taken a bit of bit to put into their own perspective because it, it made contemporary dance in African form just make sense. It resolved the question of what makes sense. Because somebody could just be like this, you could still feel them, you know what I mean? Somebody could just go like this, you could still feel them. Or somebody could just go like this, you could still feel them. You don't have to look twice. Like you you know where they are, you're like, ah, oh, ah, like, ah, and like it became that thing, you know what I mean? So today everybody has it in their own way. You know, it even in Burj, Ndombolo is really the birth of Coupe de Calais, like lie to you now. You know, all those you know, modern contemporary music find something in Congolese melody shaping, simple dancing, finding forms, no more resolve, all that. So there's a bit of Congo in everything you see today. Those who know, know. You know what I mean? Kumu, Katala, never lie.